The touch bar changes context depending on every application that you use. So I just clicked on a finder and then if I click off the window, it goes away. I click back to finder and things move around a lot. There's all kinds of different things you can do. There's this little static area of the display. Now you can bring back all of your function by clicking that little arrow that's beside it, but it never stays there. Although there is a configuration for that. If you go into system preferences on the, any machine that has a touch bar, if you go into the keyboard settings, there's an option here for customized touch bar. And, and in this little application, this is where you can drag and drop things to and from the bar. So if I want to bring this down, you click and hold and you scroll it down and then it's down here. So you can move things around and uh, you can configure it how you like it. So I've chosen to have just one volume slider, one brightness slider, and then the, uh, the pop out for the notification pane. But here's all of the things that you can do. This is the default set that you get when your touch bar is set up. But that's where you go to, to configure your touch bar. And not only that, but if you didn't want it so that you get application specific controls, there's a couple of toggles in here. There's app controls, which is the default, but there's, there's four options. You can have app controls, expanded control strip, F1, F2 keys, or quick actions. If you choose expanded control strip, then you get your traditional keys along the top, but you will never get application specific controls. So I think that's kind of silly. Same as if you want F1 keys. If you were a programmer and you need to have your F keys, you can toggle them so that they're all the time, but then you would never get application specific controls. I wish that there was a bit of a quick toggle for this setting where it'd be nice if there was a little key command that you could do to choose that but for me I just leave it on app controls all the time and then if you press function key that will give you your F keys but you can also have that to be a toggle that's how you can configure and modify your touch bar when you're not using it for a while it goes completely blank as well as you get no tactile response from the touch bar you get very limited controls here of playback and in iMovie you only get one command that you can do which is to split when you're scrubbing through there are some third-party utilities that you can get for your touch bar and here's one of them it's called touch switcher it's a free application and I do recommend that one it's pretty useful it does have some unique functionality I have this button here your most most recently used app. So instead of going down to your dock, a lot of people on Macs keep that on the screen all the time. You lose that as usable real estate. Like you can screen. just click and then slide without your finger being over it. So you don't have to lift and click, but tactile feedback. You don't have the feeling of clicking a key. Haptic touch bar. So if I load this and it shows up up in your taskbar here and from this area, you can change the haptic intensity. By default, you have none. Normally you click on it, you hear nothing. If I turn up haptic feedback, this is using the taptic engine that's in this giant touchpad, the linear actuator underneath it to give you the sense of a click and it will fire that when you use the touch bar. So I actually like that. That is a third party piece of software that gives you a little bit of a hack can have it to vibrate when releasing the intensity as well as if you want it to use a sound effect when you're clicking so you can have haptic and sound i do like that tool if I all right guys if you enjoyed this video hit that like button if you're new around here subscribe if you want to talk to me leave a comment down below and as always thanks for watching